Hey everyone, welcome to the Let's Create series, a series where we'll create mechanics from popular games using blueprints. For today, we'll be covering Genji from Overwatch. We'll be focusing on his double jump and dash ability. Alright, so let's begin. Inside of Unreal, I've selected the first person template, and we need to do a bit of pre-setup before we begin. So first of all, let's go into settings, project settings. And inside of project settings, we're going to have to change our inputs. So what we're going to do inside of here is go to input. And we actually want to get rid of the fire and reset VR. So get rid of that, get rid of that, hit plus. We're going to call this dash. We're going to leave jump, so jump's preset up for us. And for dash, we're going to make it the shift. So keyboard left shift. All right, inside of first person blueprint, we're going to go to Blueprints, First Person Character. And what we're going to do in here is get rid of a lot of unnecessary things, such as Spawn Projectile. So select that, Delete. We're going to leave Jump, leave Mouse Input, Stick Input, and then we're going to get rid of Reset VR and the Motion Controls. We're going to get a ton of errors, so let's hit Compile. Oh, it didn't. Wow. OK. And let's get rid of these, so we're just going to delete everything in here that's not needed. So we should end up with the first person camera, mesh, arrow component, and the capsule component. There we go, first error, and here it is. So what we need to do is just right click, break link, compile, save. All right, now let's quickly just test this. So hit play, and we should be able to still move around. Awesome, and we have our basic jump. So. Inside of our first person character, what we want to do is create. Oh, sorry, not create. We want to go down here. We're going to call this double jump. And let's see what we have. So when the player presses space, you jump. When it's released, you stop jumping. For double jump, we're not going to need this stop jumping node. What we're going to do, though, is drag this out. And we're going to drag jump all the way over here. Now, I'm going to explain this more in depth after we write it. For now, just follow along. So what we're going to start off with is the do n. And then on do n exit, we're going to switch on int. Once we have switch on int, we're going to connect the counter to selection. We're going to increase the default pin so that there are 0, 1, and 2. Then we're going to replace, instead of default, 1 to jump. And then we're going to break the link. The final thing we're going to do is drag this down here and use a node called launch character, which will apply a force to our character in a specific direction. In this case, we want it to be 800 on the Z axis so the character flies up. We are then going to set this to two. Now I can explain what's happening. So when you press space, it goes to do n. Do n has a counter for two. This is one and two. Um, and what happens here is it goes through the counter to selection. So it starts off at zero, and when you press space, it goes to one, which causes jump. When you press space again, and you're in the air, it launches the character a second time. The only problem so far is that when you hit the ground, there is no more options available. That is what reset is for. So on event landed, which means when you hit the ground, it will reset this entire thing. So you jump. The counter goes up, it enables us to jump. The counter goes up again if you press space again. It launches a character on the Z by 800, and if you touch the ground, you land. If you wanted a third jump, you could add another pin and then add another launch character and change this number. For our purposes, we want to leave it just at this. The next thing we want to look at, and before that, let's try it out, of course. So hit play, jump, and jump again. So now we have double jump. What we want to do next is look into the um, dash ability. So in order to do dash, we need, once again, our input. And what we need is a branch. And the reason we need a branch is because we need to check if we can dash. In this case, we need a Boolean. So this can be called can dash. And this is simply a question saying, can we or can we not dash? 
And we're going to put this into here. So we're going to get Kandash. Now, when you start off the game, we want to default it to true. So make sure you select this variable and you tick Kandash. If you Kandash, let's use that launch character node again, which we understand it adds a velocity to our character in a direction. We don't want to go upwards like previously in the double jump. What we want to do is go forward. The way we go forward is based off the first person uh, camera. To do this, we get the forward vector. And what we can do is if we were just to plug this in right now, we wouldn't actually move forward. The problem is we don't have any force to move. We don't actually know how far we want to move forward, I should say. The best way to do this is to times it by a float. And then we can put that into launch velocity. As it stands right now, zero won't get us anywhere. So let's try a value of 20,000. Now, after you launch as Genji, you dash through the air, you'll notice he stops immediately once it's up. In order to do this, we have a very simple and nice node called, called delay. Delay here is how long you want your character to dash for. Let's try a value of 0 0.03 for now, and we can adjust this after. And what we can do is once we've hit the end, we want to stop ourselves from dashing again. So let's call can dash and let's make it false by not ticking this box here. Now I said we want to stop the movement. There is another node called stop movement immediately. Super convenient. And that will stop the character from moving. Once we stop moving, we want one more delay. And the reason we want the reason why we want another delay, which I'm going to set for one second, is if if we don't reset can dash, the character can never dash again. So all we need to do is drag this here, set, drag that there, and tick can dash. Let's walk through this one more time. If I write if I press shift, I'll dash. But I can only dash if can dash is true. Can dash will turn false if I have previously dashed in the last second. Upon dashing, I launch my character in a forward vector based off where my camera is looking by this amount indicated here. After 0.03 seconds, I can no longer dash again and I stop immediately. Actually, I should probably flip these, but we'll do it after. Then I wait one second and I can dash again. So let's see if this one works this time. So shift and I dash forward. There is also that one second delay. So you can double jump and then dash. And the great thing is it is totally based off where you're looking, that forward vector based off the camera. There is one other thing I'd like to show you so you have additional control. So let's left click here, write a comment as always. And we just want to make this nice. So drag this out so we can contain our code. And this will be called dash. Now, if you click on to your character movement, here are all the properties that control your character. You can control how fast you'll move, the mass, all of these various properties. What we want to do is go to jumping and falling. You'll notice air control. At the moment, we have a very small percent of control over our movement when we're in the air. If we set this to one, hit compile and save, you should notice a massive difference in how much you can control your character in the air. So if I jump, I can now move to the right if I'm moving left in my jump. If I jump to the right, I can move left in my jump. If I double jump, I can jump forward and then jump backwards. It's really nice. So as playing as Genji, I get a lot of control over where I want to move. I can double jump onto here, dash, double jump, wait, dash. And now I can really move around with ease. What I'm going to do next is construct a little obstacle course and show you the character in there. Thanks for watching the video. 
I hope you got something useful out of this, and I hope you enjoyed this different type of format. I was never traditionally going to do tutorials on this channel, but this feels a little different. I'm just having fun making different types of mechanics. So let me know if you enjoyed this type of video, and I'll see you in the next one.